Time now for us to turn our attention to our focus report. And after presenting her plans to Cabinet and getting a lot more support than many expected, British Prime Minister Theresa May is now en route to Brussels, where she is set to brief other EU leaders on the current proposal for the UK's withdrawal from the bloc. Notably, the plan for one of the main unresolved issues, the border between the Republic of Ireland, an EU member state, and Northern Ireland, a part of the United Kingdom. The prospect of a physical border with tariffs and hindrances to business is of great concern in the region, where many companies work on both sides. Hervé Amoric and Emerald Maxwell take a close look at what it may mean for people there. We don't want a border. The Derry Girls Against Borders, rehearsing in a hotel in Derry. The group started their campaign last August, which will end with this EU summit. We are Derry they want to send a message to the 28 leaders from ordinary people living close to the border. The freedom of movement that we enjoy in these islands and that perhaps we've taken for granted, we feel it's very important that that freedom of movement is protected. They've held meetings in London, Dublin and Brussels and tens of thousands have signed their petition. Nicola Heron wrote the Derry Girls campaign song. Today she's taking a young activist to visit an ancient fort, close to what will potentially be the only land border between the UK and the EU. This is Derry. This is Northern Ireland, it's part of the UK. This is Donegal, which is in the EU and will remain in the EU post-Brexit. The 500-kilometre border is invisible. The only way to tell which country you're in is by the colour of the road markings. What people here fear most is a return to the border checks that existed before the peace agreement was signed 20 years ago. Good Friday Agreement was a very interesting process, a very difficult process. It meant that nationalists in Northern Ireland could feel as Irish as they wanted to and, and Protestants and Unionists in Northern Ireland could feel as British as they wanted to and that was fine. We were no longer feeling threatened by the other community. For a border to be put up now at this point in time is going to make the nationalists feel that they are less attached to Ireland. A former police chief, Peter Sheridan was in charge of fighting terrorism on the border during the conflict. He believes that a return to the border surveillance of the past in any form would be too great a risk to peace. What resolved the conflict was the ability to resolve the border issue and resolve people's identity and allow them to be whatever they wanted to be in it. We are still coming out of conflict in this place. So you have to think beyond customs and the economics of it into identity and what it means for people's identity. This is the Peace Bridge. It stretches physically across the River Foyle and symbolically across the political and religious divide. It was funded by the EU. Gregory Campbell's Democratic Unionist Party represents a majority of Protestants. It's the only Northern Ireland party which campaigned for Brexit. A hard border is a physical impossibility. We demonstrated that over 30 years of violence. We couldn't do that when we had 30,000 troops on the ground. So we're not going to be able to do it now. It hasn't stopped, unfortunately, the Brussels bureaucrats from using the concept of a hard border, the mythical concept of a hard border, to try and extract political concessions. It's not going to happen. But the Derry Girls Against Borders want more than just reassuring words from politicians. I'm Protestant and there are many Protestants who don't want a border in this country either. So we've come together as one voice to say we don't want a border, a hard border, a soft border, we don't want a border. Foyle Harbour is uniquely exposed to the conundrum posed by the UK's departure from the EU next March. Both the UK and Irish government claim jurisdiction over Loch Foyle. If you look at the pylon and just beyond that, a matter of a few hundred yards is the border. The estuary swings round and crisscrosses and uh, uh, we are fully integrated here. About two billion tonnes of bulk cargo are handled here every year, servicing 20,000 farms on both sides of the border. When Britain leaves the customs union, any introduction of tariffs or regulatory checks on the border would seriously affect the harbour's competitiveness. Both the UK and the EU agree that border checks should be avoided. We are right on the European frontier here. And for us, any consideration that anything other than a deal would happen is, is almost too much to, uh, uh, to, to really think about. We're optimistic there will be a deal even at this late stage uh, because it would be very easy just to pull the shutters down. Checks will have to begin to make sure that agro-food products, for example, meet EU regulations. To avoid having them at the Irish border, 
trucks could be inspected on ferries in the Irish Sea or in British ports. But democratic unionists hate the idea of Northern Ireland being treated differently from the rest of the UK. I think the Prime Minister is already aware of our stance and that we, we simply won't buy into or support or give our vote to something that makes business within the UK more difficult. We want to make it less difficult. The 10 DUP members of Parliament are threatening to bring down Theresa May's government over the issue. Closing a deal on the Irish border question is like squaring a circle. And it needs to happen fast, as the Brexit clock is ticking.